Howdy boys and girls, this is Mrs. Dunn. Today I'm going to talk to you about prime factorization. Prime factorization is something that deals with prime and composite. So let's go through a couple of definitions before we get to actually working through um, prime factorization. Let's talk about the definition of a prime number and a composite number. So all whole numbers are either prime or composite. A prime number is a whole number with exactly two factors, one in itself. So an example of that is 3. The only way I can get to 3 is 1 times 3. So it's a prime number. Compare that to a composite. A composite number is a whole number with more than two factors. So an example of that is 6. I can get to 6 from 2 times 3 and 1 times 6. It has more than two factors, so it's composite. When we deal with prime factorizations, we need to know what our prime numbers are. So I'm just going to have listed here the first 10 prime numbers for you. There are ways that we can discover what the prime numbers are, but I want to have them make sure that we have them listed here. So I want to make sure that we have them in here. I have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 1, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Make sure those are all down there. And then I want you to also write that 1 is neither prime nor composite. 1 is a special case. Okay, so make sure that all of this is written down in your notes so that you do have it listed. And then we are going to go into what prime factorization is. So prime factorization is a way of expressing a composite number as a product of primes. So how would I be able to say 6 as a product of primes? That's what we are looking at today. Now, you might have done prime factorization with factor trees before. We do something called a ladder method, or I like to reference it as a cake method. Make sure that you do have all of these set of notes written down before you move on to this next part. Okay, so I'm going to take the prime factorization of 46, 32, and 56. Let's start with 42. When you take the prime factorization, you try to find out how many prime numbers can go into that number. So I look at my prime numbers, and I know that 2 is a factor of 46, because 46 is even. So I'm going to put a 2 out here, and that's what I have as my first prime. So 2 times what equals 46? Well, I might have to do a little bit of division, and I can see that 2 times 23 equals 46. And then I look and I see, is 23 prime? And if it's not, I'd have to move on. But if I look up here, my first 10 numbers, 23 is a prime number. So at this point, I am done with my prime factorization. So my prime factorization of 46 is just 2 times 23. They aren't all that easy. Let's look at number third, the number 32. So if I look at 32, I usually think, what's the first number that I have out here that I can factor out? And I usually start with 2. It is an even number, so I can factor out a 2. So 2 times what equals 32? Again, you might need to do a little division. 2 times 16. So I look at 16. Is 16 a prime number? I have to ask myself. It is not. It's not up here. I think, how can I get to 16? Well, I know 4 times 4 is 16, but 4 is not a prime number. So I cannot, when I do my next cake step, my next layer, I cannot put a 4 out here. The only numbers that go out to the side are prime numbers. The only numbers that go out to the side and the very last number, they should all be prime. So what else can I do to get to 16? Well, it is even. 2 is a prime number, so I can take out a 2. 2 times 8 is 16. I check to make sure that this number is not prime. 8 is not prime, so I know I have to keep on going. I can take another 2 out. 2 times 4 is 8. Is 4 prime? It's not one of my prime numbers because I can take another 2 out. And 2 times 2 is 4. So right now, I see that all of my numbers off to my side of my cake are all primes. They all happen to be twos as well. And I have a, a prime at the bottom, which is also a two. So I would write this as two times two times two times two times two. Or another way that we can write that, because we know how to write exponents, that's one, two, three, four, five sets of two that I'm multiplying. 
Another way to write that is 2 to the fifth power. And we'll usually see exponents written with our base and our powers. All right, hopefully we're doing pretty good with this. 56. So 56, again, starts with an even number, so I will take 2 out of it. And I have to remember 2 times what equals 56. So when I do that, I have 20, well, let's see, 56 and 2. I haven't really calculated this one, so I know 2 goes into 5 2 times. That's 4. Bring down my 6. 2 goes into 16. That's 8 times. Ah, oh, so it's 28. Okay. It's 28 prime. It's not one of the first 10 prime numbers, and the last prime number is 29, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I have to keep on going. So I'm going to go ahead and take another 2 out. Half of 28, that'd be 14. 14 is not a prime number because I know 2 times 7. So I can put a 2 here and a 7 here. 7 is a prime number? Yep, it sure is. It's right up here at the top. So 7 is my prime number. So I have primes off to the side, prime on the bottom. So I could write this out as 2 times 2 times 2 times 7, or a better way to write that is 2 to the third power, because I have three sets of 2's, times 7. Okay, so there are a couple of examples that we've gone through on prime factorization. We're going to do more. I want you to write in your whisk a statement, and then our check for understanding, I just need you to find the prime factorizations of the numbers 16 and 150. Again, I want to make sure that you do your check for understanding so that you have it ready and you've given yourself some practice before we have our lesson. Thank you.